When we speak about Egypt, first of all, we think of the pyramids. And no wonder, because they're the hallmark of the land of the pharaohs. But many people forget about other Egyptian sites, in particular the Great Sphinx. Meanwhile, the Sphinx, like the pyramids, hides many secrets. And scientists have recently revealed one of them. In this episode, I'll tell you what scientists found inside the Sphinx. Let's go! Not long ago, researchers were able to find the entrance to the Sphinx secret room. For a long time, there was talk among the Egyptians that the Sphinx itself was just a peculiar tip of the iceberg and that the most interesting thing was under it. It was believed that the entrance to the secret room was in the area of the paws of the structure or in the area of its head. The hidden door to the secret room was first reported by Egyptologist Matt Growling. According to Growling, this door was brought to the Louvre by some unknown person two centuries ago. However, it's not yet possible to confirm this hypothesis on 100% as it's necessary to conduct a detailed study which requires permission from the Ministry of Culture of Egypt. But despite the fact that the study is hampered by the state, scientists have every reason to believe that the location of the door was correct. Back in 1989, using special equipment, a group of Japanese scientists from Waseda University, headed by Professor Tsukuji Yoshimura, found a narrow tunnel under the left sphinx paw. It led in the direction of the Pyramid of Khafra. Tunnel began at a depth of 2 meters and sloped downward. The team of scientists did not manage to get inside the room, however, they suggested exactly what the space under the Sphinx might look like. Before the Japanese scientists could conduct further research, the Egyptian authorities intervened and stopped the project. Yoshimura and his expedition were never able to return to work. The same happened to other explorers who were trying to uncover the secret of the Sphinx. The hidden space under the sculpture amazed even Egyptian scientists, many of whom did not expect such a discovery. But what exactly is inside the Sphinx, or rather, under it? And why the Egyptian government does not allow researchers to be there? Many people speculate that at the end of the last century, the Egyptian authorities themselves made a scientific discovery. They discovered the Hall of Testimonies, or Hall of Chronicles, under the Sphinx, and now they're hiding. Why are they hiding it? According to theorists, it's this hidden room that can completely change the history of the world because it contains evidence of the existence of a highly developed civilization that inhabited the Earth long ago. Obviously, it's not beneficial for the Egyptian authorities to have such information leaked. Now, scientists do not doubt the existence of a secret room or even several rooms under the Sphinx, but still do not know what exactly can be found there. Possible that the theorists are not wrong and there's undeniable evidence in the Hall of Chronicles that the story as we know it is not true. In any case, scientists still have not lost hope of getting inside the Sphinx, finding all its mysteries, and linking the true meaning of the Sphinx's existence with the other mysteries of Egypt. And what do you think? What do you think hides beneath the Great Sphinx? Could there really be a room full of chronicles which can prove that the pyramids and the Sphinx itself were built by an incredible advanced civilization? Or are there hidden tombs with untold riches? Or maybe there's nothing at all. Share your thoughts in the comments and stay tuned because Egypt's secrets are not limited to the Sphinx. This country boasts other incredible mysteries and discoveries that amaze scientists and even puzzle them. They're worth finding out about. Let's move on. Stranger In early September 2020, archaeologists discovered 13 sarcophagi with mummies inside in the Saqqara settlement. A couple of months later, the number of found sarcophagi exceeded 100. In addition to these, various figurines were found in the mine tombs. Forty figurines depicted the deity Pitasokar. It used to be believed that statues with him had magical powers and helped to obtain a posthumous rebirth. Another twenty figurines were found depicting Horus, the Egyptian god of the sky, who was represented as a man with a falcon's head. That would be all right, but the scientists found two more wooden figurines that raised a lot of questions. The name Nomis was written on them. It would seem that there's a clue, but there isn't. The name gave scientists no information. To this day, scientists are trying to figure out who this unknown Nomis was in ancient Egyptian times. So far, the mystery has not been solved. But it's possible that by solving it, scientists can find many answers to the questions that have puzzled them for many years. Golden City Just recently, in the spring of this year, scientists announced an outstanding find. They managed to discover the Golden City. It was founded during the time of the pharaoh Amenhotep III, who ruled ancient Egypt in the 14th century BC. The city was once the largest administrative center of the region, but then it was abandoned, after which the city was covered with sand and it was lost. 
Fortunately, during excavations near Luxor, archaeologists were able to find the city. The streets of the city are divided by houses. The walls of some of them are three meters high. In the course of excavation, scientists were able to discover the different areas of the city – administrative, residential, and industrial – where there was a site for the production of bricks and molds for the manufacture of objects made of metal and glass were found. But what's the significance of the discovery in general? First, to discover an entire city that had been hidden under sand for thousands of years is cool. Second, according to scientists, the discovery of the lost city provides a rare opportunity to see how the ancient Egyptians lived at a time when the country was at its peak of its prosperity. In addition, the discovery of the city will help scientists to shed light on one of history's greatest mysteries. Why Akhenaten and Nefertiti decided to move to Amarna, a settlement on the east bank of the Nile? This will allow them to fill important gaps in the study of ancient Egyptian history. Giant A few years ago, scientists studied the mummy of Pharaoh Sennacht. The pharaoh himself was a little-known ruler. Scientists do not know much about him. They believe he was the third or fourth pharaoh of the Third Dynasty. His mummy would not have attracted attention at all, but as it turned out, Sennacht was a real giant. Analysis of the mummy showed that when he was alive, the pharaoh was 198 centimeters tall. For comparison, average height of ancient Egyptians during his reign was 170 centimeters. Scientists believe that Sennacht suffered from gigantism and that he was generally the very first giant in the history of mankind. They believe that Sennacht developed a tumor in his pituitary gland, causing his brain to produce too much growth hormone. But how exactly did he get this tumor? What triggered the pharaoh's gigantism if, according to the researchers, such giants had never been seen before. Or maybe scientists are all wrong and Sennacht was just one of many giants that used to roam the earth everywhere. So far, it's not known. But if it's confirmed, then we'll be able to look at the world's history in a completely different way. Jewelry In 1911, a group of archaeologists excavated a tomb in the settlement of El Gerza. What they found was an ancient tomb buried underground for nearly 5,000 years. A tomb that held secrets that scientists could never have imagined. Inside, they found a string of nine cylindrical beads. That would have been all right, but they were made of iron. Historians believe that the Iron Age began in Egypt around 600 BC when the Egyptians began to smelt their own iron. The tomb, however, has been dated back to 3350 BC, about two and a half millennia before iron was buried there. So where'd this iron come from? Puzzled scientists speculated that it might have come from outer space piece of jewelry was probably made from particles of an iron meteorite that fell in Egypt before the Iron Age period. This is interesting in itself, but it's also interesting that impurities of cobalt and germanium were found in the piece of jewelry. This fact fully confirms the cosmic origin of the piece of jewelry. Moreover, the age of the find suggests that perhaps these beads were not processed on Earth because blacksmithing did not exist back then. Does this mean that the tomb contained not just piece of jewelry made of cosmic materials, but jewelry made by aliens? Sounds crazy, but this is the point of view held by many theorists and even some scientists who cannot explain the find otherwise. Black Sarcophagi One of the strangest and most mysterious Egyptian discoveries of recent times is considered to be the 24 giant black sarcophagi. They were discovered in the Serapeum of Saqqara near Cairo. The sarcophagi do not resemble those in which ancient Egyptians were usually buried. Each weighed 100 tons and was finely crafted. This, by the way, is one of the main mysteries of the sarcophagi. Scientists do not understand how thousands of years ago, craftsmen managed to create something like that. The second mystery is that the black sarcophagi were empty. There were no human or even animal remains inside. What were they made for then? And why was it necessary to make such large, heavy, and elaborate sarcophagi? Scientists have no answers to these questions, but some theorists are sure that these sarcophagi could have been left on Earth by mysterious aliens or created by representatives of a highly developed civilization that once lived in Egypt. That's all, guys. Who do you think made these giant black sarcophagi? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.